Hello everybody and welcome to another episode. Now I wasn't actually going to film this episode but then I thought well maybe there are people out there that would benefit from this if they're thinking of changing the fuel filters on a Land Rover. So there are two fuel filters. One is under the bonnet and there is one under the right hand side um, that's bolted to the chassis route. So first up the one underneath the bonnet is right at the back here and I believe you just undo this nut here on the top and the whole thing, I've actually loosened it there, and this is the bottom part's come loose. So I think that's a pretty easy one to do and I hope I have the right one in here. And then the one that's underneath is this type and that is under here. That is under here and it has like a drain um, plug on the end there. So I think it's a similar arrangement where you, I think you spin the bottom off or there, yeah, it's the same arrangement. Look, there's a, there's a nut at the top. So that's pretty simple as well. Um, to make it easier, you can take this floor panel off, but I think I'm gonna be all right. If I get into trouble, then I'll take the panel off, but I don't really fancy undoing all those rusty bolts. So that's underneath the right hand side. But let's start with the one on the front. Okay, let's see. I've never changed these before, so I am learning as you are learning. Okay, so that I guess goes all the way to the bottom. There's actually quite a lot of fuel in there, so I'm just going to go and get a cup to catch it all. There we go, easy. Okay, so that just dropped off. And oh, there we go. Okay, so that's easy enough. Right, so as you can see, this is like a canister a little bit like an oil filter and probably like the rest of the maintenance on this Land Rover I doubt these have been changed in a long time so I did notice in the new one that it comes with a new o-ring so there's the seal there and there's quite a lot of dirt in the bottom there so I'm going to give this a good clean out Okay, so I compared the new filter with the old filter and it's exactly the right size. Uh, there is a big seal in here and also there's a big seal that goes underneath here which I've just taken out by using these. These are really handy, just stick it into the uh, rubber and then pull it out quite easy. Um, in the kit though there are three smaller o-rings and I saw straight away that there's a o-ring on this so I think that's a smaller one but the other two I went and got the manual just to make sure I hadn't missed or dropped anything and this is a different type of arrangement and there is a bigger um, o-ring there but not one on this bolt so I think the other o-ring is probably for this style of filter because if you look here there's no way that can go on here i'm assuming i'm hoping well let's see okay on further inspection i can actually feel under here there's an o-ring yeah there's an o-ring under there so that i need to remove and replace. It's really good to do this type of maintenance because that o-ring that I just removed just snapped and it's really brittle so um, the new o-ring is nice and supple. That leaves the third o-ring which I'm not sure if we actually need it or um, it should go somewhere. I mean I just put it on here to see but I can't see any reason why that would go there because this actually 
doesn't fit snugly against it so yeah okay so i really couldn't find a reason for the third o-ring um so i have the large one in here uh, i dipped it in a bit of diesel that i had drained out of here i have the new o-ring up in here also put it, um, soaked that in a bit of diesel and then this and obviously that new ring under here o-ring under there and then it's just quite simple new o-ring there and we screw it back in easy as that and then if i have missed a reason for that other o-ring i think i'm going to find out about it so this is just a 7 16 um, spanner and that's it okay i just checked uh, the other filter that I have, this basically came with a load of parts I got with the Land Rover um, but this seems not to be the same as the other filter that's underneath the car and it looks very similar to the one I've just changed and I have a feeling that that other o-ring that was in the pack is probably for this drain plug uh, so that would explain why that is there so I need to go and purchase one of those before I can continue with that. One thing to bear in mind with the diesel engine, quite often if they run out of fuel or don't get fuel through to the um, injector pump, it won't start again by just turning the engine over and trying to pump more uh, diesel through. So there, I just actually tried to start this. It started up straight away, but then it cut out and it won't start again. I thought I'd get away with it, but there is a solution. Uh, if you look down here, there is the fuel pump right there and below it or attached to it but on the bottom of it there's a little lever and that is a manual pump so I have to manually pump that, it's really hard to get the camera in there and show you how um, but there, so you basically pump it like this to pump the diesel back into the system. So I pumped it for, I don't know, 10-15 seconds, so let's see if that's enough. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let's pump again. Okay, so now it's the next day and after not being able to get this thing started again I then referred to what I should have done in the first place to the workshop manual and further investigation it shows that you should not try to start uh, the vehicle after you have changed the fuel filter and I was fully aware that with diesel engines that if you run out of fuel you need to be, uh, bleed the system and everything uh, but yeah after trying to get this to start it, it was obvious it wasn't going to start so there's actually a procedure and it says in this book I'll put a photo I'll put a picture of the page in the manual at the end of this video uh, for reference to anybody who's who wants to do the same or if they run out of fuel and they need to uh, bleed their system but there's basically a procedure if you change your fuel filter um, you need to crack open the inlet to the filter and then you use that manual um, lever on the pump to pump any air or pump all the air out of the filter fill it up and then it will start as normal but because I didn't do that the air then moved forward to the injector pump and there is basically two bleed nipples but I'll go through the procedure because the next thing um, I need to do is the filter that is underneath here is actually called a what is they called 65 it's called a SEDI mentor so for sediment I guess from the fuel tank so a type of filter but I think 
rather than replacing the filter you take that off and you clean it and there is actually a drain plug on the bottom of it so I'm going to investigate that now and then I think I'm going to have to do the bleed um, procedure so then I'll go through that um, after I've cleaned that out and hopefully haven't snapped off the plastic drain plug that I'm a little bit worried about opening but yeah I mean it clearly says in here that you have your fuel filter which is the one I changed underneath the bonnet then you have this sedimentor here which is the one underneath it also says that there's a there's a fuel pump there as well with the pump on uh, it also says that there's a gauze filter in the fuel tank which is quite normal and then I think there's one it mentions in the injector pump which is here I think okay so here we are underneath on the right hand side uh, of the car and this is the sedimenter I think as they say and it's very similar to the um, filter that I changed yesterday so there's a I can feel that there's a nut up the top and I believe that that screw goes all the way through the same as the filter and there is also a drain um, plug here which I'm a bit worried to undo in case it snaps off I mean if it does break I can probably replace it with a bolt with a copper washer or something and the only thing is is that the tank fuel tank is actually higher than this so I'm not sure if it's just gonna keep bleeding but um, well we'll see huh I can always block it for something but I think that there you can clean this out inside I think that's um, what I read anyway and there are there is a seal here as well like a o-ring similar to the uh, other fuel filter but I don't have a replacement one so I'm gonna have to use the old one but hopefully that will seal so I'm gonna try and bleed it first without snapping it and go from there okay so I just really gently cracked it open with a pair of grips and uh, it's coming loose so um, there we go it's starting to drip so I'll empty this out okay so I just took the drain plug out and it has a o-ring on there that definitely needs to be replaced uh, but I'm um, like I said this is actually below the fuel tank so I'm not sure if it will just keep draining until the fuel tank gets empty or that that is actually that full but um, I'm gonna fill this up and then um, maybe put this plug back in put a new o-ring on and come up with another solution I can't actually crimp the fuel line either because it's a hard plastic line that you can probably see there but it doesn't look like it's stopping does it okay so like I suspected that wasn't going to stop draining because I just changed this um, bucket to a slightly bigger one and it just kept draining at the same speed so I guess if there was any crap at the bottom then it will have drained out um, but I will have to come up with another solution to take this off and clean it but maybe maybe that is good enough um, for this but uh yeah I would imagine you have to drain the tank to do this so checking the fuel that drained out there is actually some crap in the bottom of there so maybe that was a good thing to um, to be able to drain it out okay referring to the book it says um, I guess that this is a water separator this sedimenter and it says that if you drain it uh, if there's any water then you drain it it will come out the bottom there and there is no need to prime the system obviously because no air has got in there because it was just draining out but I think um, I think what I'm going to do is I'll go through the procedure uh, for this video to show you what you need to do if you run out of fuel or if you change your fuel filter like I did yesterday and don't get stuck just trying to start it so let's open a bonnet and I'll go through it right let's get on it okay step one 
So if you change the fuel filter under the bonnet like I did yesterday, this one, and couldn't get it to start, it says, do not attempt to start the engine hoping to draw the fuel through in this way. Otherwise, a fuel full priming procedure will be necessary. So I tried to start it, and basically the air that was uh, in the filter from being new and not full of fuel, and there's no way you can um, fill this with fuel either because that nut obviously goes through the top. So because I started it, the air that was in there moved to the injector pump. So anyway, if you do, I'm gonna start again. Okay, if you change this fuel filter like I did yesterday, what you're supposed to do, what I didn't do, is don't start the engine or try to start the engine. You need to crack open this uh, nut here, which is your inlet, fuel inlet, I believe, or is it outlet? That's actually outlet. Anyway, you crack open this, and then you go down to the fuel pump, which is down there, and you pull up the lever, which pumps the fuel manually, into here, and you'll pump it until all the air comes out. Once all the air's come out, you tighten this up, you start your engine and away you go. But because I didn't do that and I tried to start it, all the air that was in this empty new filter pumped through to the injector pump, which is here. Right, so if you do that, or say you've run out of fuel by the side of the road and there is two bleed nipples, one on the left here and one on the right, First you crack open the one on the left and then you manually pump the fuel pump until all the air comes out and it starts uh, only uh, diesel coming through and then you tighten it up. Then you undo this one and then you do the same. Then the car should start as normal. And that's what I did after trying to get it to start for half an hour or so, read the manual. And in here it says quite clearly, so there's your bleed nipples and number eight, it says, uh, where is it? Release air vent screw on distributor body. So that's that one on the left. And the one on the right is, it says to ensure that all the air is exhausted from the pump, it may also be necessary to slacken the air vent screw in the distributor control cover. So when I cracked this one open, that's where all the air came out of and then it just started, started up straight away. So there we have it. That's how you change your fuel filter, bleed your sedimentor, and be able to bleed the system if you run out of fuel or do what I did and try to start it. So I hope that's been helpful. Definitely a learning curve for me. And um, yes, thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment and um, thanks. Cheers. Okay, before I go, maybe I should try and start it. Because then if it doesn't, I've missed something out in the video, I guess, right? So, are you ready? I'm not sure I'm ready. There you go. I didn't have any doubt, really, you know. Okay, thanks a lot. Cheers.